Good morning friends, it's Hayley here from the Gale Library in Newton and I'm here today with your preschool story time. Today we are celebrating National Poetry Month. So I'm going to be reading some poems today and talking a little bit about poetry and maybe you guys could make up your own poem after our story time today. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> I think so. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna figure out our day of the week and we know that we have our story time on the same day every week, which is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The day today is Tuesday and we are still in the month of, can you remember? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Did you notice my thumbs up? <laughs> we are in April still. Uh, what's the date today? I have to look at my watch. It is April 13th today and the number 13 is a one and a three. Still in 2021 and it is still spring. Have a look out of your window and see if you can see what the weather is like today. It's not very sunny. I do like it when the sun shines, but today we have clouds in the sky. It's a little cloudy today, so I'm gonna pop our cloudy. What kind of mood are you in? Are you sad? Are you happy? Are you curious? <laughs> I'm happy, so I'm gonna pop my happy face up today. I'm happy that it's poetry month and I get to read. Uh, the first book I chose is called The Gruffalo, and it is by my absolute most favorite children's author in the whole world, and she's called Julia Donaldson, and illustrated by Axel Scheffler. Um, this is a rhyming book. So a poem is a piece of writing that uses people's imagination and words to share ideas or emotions or a story. And um, the thing about poetry is it is often written in rhymes or in rhythms and it has kind of a structure to it. And it often tells about a particular item as well. So we celebrate National Poetry Month in April and we can do that in lots of ways. We can make up poetry by ourselves. We can read poetry. We can draw pictures. There's all kinds of things that we can do to celebrate National Poetry Month. Today, I'm gonna read some books with us. And this book, as I said, is called The Gruffalo and it is a rhyming book. So I thought it would be a great book to start reading on National Poetry Month. This is all about a mouse, a mouse and something called a Gruffalo. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> a mouse took a stroll through the deep, dark wood. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Are you going to little brown mouse come and have lunch in my underground house it's terribly kind of you fox but no i'm having lunch with a gruffalo a gruffalo what's a gruffalo a gruffalo why didn't you know he has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws where are you meeting him my camera's moving <laughs> here by these rocks. And his favorite food is roasted fox. <gasps> roasted fox, I'm off, fox said. Goodbye, little mouse, and away he sped. Silly old fox, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? Can you guys hear the rhymes in these books? The rhymes are the words that have the same sound at the end. On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. An owl saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have tea in my treetop house. It's frightfully nice of you, owl, but no. I'm having tea with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo? Why, didn't you know? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. Where are you meeting him? Here by this stream and his favorite food is owl ice cream. <gasps> owl ice cream! To wit, to woo! Goodbye little mouse and away owl flew. 
silly old owl. Doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? On went the mouse through the deep, dark wood. A snake saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come for a feast in my log pile house. It's wonderfully good of you, snake, but no, I'm having a feast with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo? Why, don't you know? His eyes are orange, his tongue is black, and he has purple prickles all over his back. Where are you meeting him? Here, by this lake. And his favorite food is scrambled snake. <gasps> scrambled snake, it's time I hid. Goodbye, little mouse. And away snake slid. Silly old snake, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffle? <gasps> oh, but who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible tusks in his terrible jaws? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange, his tongue is black, and he has purple prickles all over his back. Oh, help! Oh, no! It's the Gruffalo! Uh-oh. My favorite food, the Gruffalo said. You'll taste good on a slice of bread. Good, said the mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this wood. Just walk behind me. Soon you'll see everyone is afraid of me. Oh, sure, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You go ahead. I'll follow after. They walked and walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in the leaves ahead. Who do you think that might be? <gasps> it's Snake, said Owl. Hi, Snake. Hello. Snake took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh dear, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And away he slid right through his log pile house. You see, said the mouse. I told you so. Amazing, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, woot, 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 woot. I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. Who could that be? Woot, woot. Oh, it's Owl, said the mouse. Hi, Owl. Hello. Owl took one look at the Gruffalo. Woohoo, he said, goodbye, little mouse. And he flew right up to his treetop house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I can hear paws on the path ahead. Who is the last creature, do you remember? It's Fox, said the mouse. Why, Fox, hello. Fox took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, help, he said, goodbye, little mouse. And away he ran to his underground house. The mouse said, Gruffalo, now you see, everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy's beginning to rumble and my favorite food is Gruffalo Crumble. Gruffalo Crumble, the Gruffalo said, and quick as the wind, he turned and fled. All was quiet in the deep, dark wood. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. Wasn't that a fun story? That was a clever little mouse, huh? To trick that Gruffalo into thinking that he was scary, and the mouse is so tiny. So I have some other poems for you today. I found this book in our labor, and I thought it was fun. It's called, Please Bury Me in the Library. <laughs> and it is a book full of poems. So I thought I would pick out a couple for us because they're quite funny and poems can be funny. Let's have a look. This one is called, What If Books Had a Different Name? Can you see this? It's a lamb eating green eggs. I wonder what book that's from. What if books had different names? Like Alice in Underland, Furious George, Good night, noon, Barbara the Beaver, and a visit from St. Nicholas, <laughs> or Winnie the Pooh Pooh Poohs, or the Walrus and the Carp, and her emperor has no clo clues, <laughs> or Mary had a little clam, 
And how about green eggs and spam? Well, surely you can think of one. Oh, what extremely merry huckleberry fun. Can you think of a book and give it a different name that rhymes the name it has, with the name it has? What about if we said the Gruffalo, but we called it the Huffalo? Instead of the Gruffalo, we could change the name, couldn't we? This, I, and because the book is called Bury Me in the Library, I chose the poem, Bury Me in the Library. Looks very dark in there though. Our library's nice and bright. Please bury me in the library in the clean, well-lighted stacks of novels, history, poetry, right next to the paperbacks, where the kids' books dance with true romance and the dictionary's dozes. Please bury me in the library with a dozen long-stemmed poses. Way back in the rack of magazines, I won't be sad too often if they bury me in the library with bookworms in my coffin. <laughs> You would be busy reading forever. All right, reading at the beach. Summer reading at the beach. This is a good poem because our summer reading program is starting in a couple of months. This one is called Summer Reading at the Beach. Have you guys ever read at the beach? I wonder, I keep falling. Summer reading at the beach. Some lay novels on their navels. That's their bellies. Some hold comics in their fists. Some build castles with shovels from the Times bestseller list. Some folks read beside the ocean. Some folks read along the coast. Some folks rub on suntan lotion. Some folks who forgot are toast. That's another rhyming one. That one means if they forgot their sun cream, they're gonna be toast. They're gonna burn their skin. This next one is called, Are You a Book Person? Are you a book person? I wonder. I think so, if you're watching story time. <laughs> a book is a kind of person with a mind of her own who lives alone, standing on a shelf by herself. She has a spine, a heart, a soul, and a goal. To capture, to amuse, to light a fire, you're the fuse. Or else joyfully, just to be from beginning to end. Need a friend? That's a nice one, huh? All right, let's do another. Oh, that was called Bury Me in the Library by Patrick Lewis. I forgot to tell you the author. This one is called Pug and Other Animal Poems, written by Valerie Worth. And you can check all these books out in our nonfiction poetry section. We have a whole stack of poetry books that you guys can enjoy. Have you guys seen rabbits around? Here's a poem about a rabbit. And this poem is a little bit different to the ones we've read. This poem is not a rhyming poem. So this just has different words that tell us all about a rabbit. I like the way they ramble out of hiding. In the evening, daring to be seen, but staying far enough away for safety and feed along the grassy fringe unhastily in peaceful thought, it seems. I see lots of rabbits in my garden at the moment, trying to find food and running around in the sun. This one's called Pug and other animals. Look how cute. <laughs> He's so cute. Pug, with their goggling eyes and stumpy noses, wrinkled brows and hairy moles. They're what some people might call Pug ugly, perhaps because for dogs, they look a lot like people. Do you think it looks like a person? It's a little bit grumpy. <laughs> Would be a grumpy person, wouldn't it? Here's another dog one that you might enjoy. A Dachshund. You ever seen a Dachshund anywhere? It's a very long, look, it's like a sausage dog. It looks like a very long sausage. It's hard to keep from drooping when you've got so long a body. Plenty of legs at front and back but nothing propped up the middle. It's kind of like he has legs missing in the middle. <laughs> we'll choose one more from this one. Then we've got time for one more story. Let's have a look. I'm trying to find out, see if there's a rhyming one in this book. I don't think there is. Oh, this is a good one because I've seen lots of geese, geese flying around in the moment. Geese. Then they wavered away down the cold sky with cries like grieving. Now we hear those same high voices returning 
and noisy rejoicing. That means they flew away for the winter. Now they came back for the spring. Okay, so this last book is very important for our craft today. It's called Swirl by Swirl. And if you grab a craft kit from outside the library, we're doing some swirly crafts today. This is a spiral. And I thought this was a, so not a rhyming poetry book. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but it is a poetry book about swirls and spirals. And it's called Swirl by Swirl, Spirals in Nature by Joyce Sidman. A spiral is a snuggly shape. It fits neatly in small places. Coiled tight, warm and safe, it waits. Now, can you see all the spirals? There's a snake here and an eastern chipmunk all curled up in a spiral and a woodchuck curled up in a spiral. There's lots of spirals in nature. It waits for a chance to expand when spring comes. Excuse me. A spiral is a growing shape. It starts small and gets bigger. I'm so sorry. Swirl by swirl. Can you see? It's like a shell. It unwraps itself one soft curl at a time. There are lots of shapes in nature that are spirals. A spiral is a strong shape. Its outer curves protect what's inside. <clears throat> it knows how to defend itself. Can you see the ram with the spiral horns? A spiral reaches out to exploring the world. It winds around and around. So spirals are in the ocean as well. It clings tight, grasping what it needs, and it never has trouble holding on. Can you see the elephant's trunk holding on to this, holding on like a spiral? A spiral is a clever shape. It's graceful and it's strong. It is bold and beautiful. <clears throat> a spiral moves. It swirls through water, gathering bubbles. It twists through the air with clouds on its tail. It stretches starry arms through space, spinning and sparkling, forever expanding. Or it curls up neat and small, warm and safe. A spiral is a snuggly shape. That end. This is a really nice book. It's got lots of colorful images and really pretty spirals. All right, you guys, I am gonna say goodbye and happy Tuesday and happy National Poetry Month. And I will see you all next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Don't forget, you can book appointments to come into the library on Mondays and Wednesdays. And at the end of the month on April 26th, we have um, a Zoom program teaching you how to make a kite that you can fly from home. So sign up to that by giving us a quick email and then we can get your kit ready for pickup. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you guys again. Bye.